Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the All Systems Go podcast. And you all are in for a treat because you have two, two automation minds on the podcast today. And and when I say minds, I, I don't say it lightly. Who I'm about to introduce to you is someone who, if you catch us in any regular conversation, we we go back to when marketing automation was just literally two platforms. And and I was recently on his podcast and he reminded me of a platform that I had forgot about called Sin Pepper. So just took me way back down memory lane. And I'm excited to introduce him to you all today on the podcast so we can talk about how to achieve automation by way of delegation. Now, you all know I like to do automation by way of education (laughs) and teach you all how to do it. But what if you want to flip it? What if you don't want to train someone up? What if you you, you want to just hand that task off and have someone do it for you? Well, our guest today is Carl Taylor. He's an entrepreneur, investor and best selling author and leading expert when it comes to building a freedom focused business that doesn't rely on you. He is also the founder and CEO of Automation Agency, an outsourced marketing task team that helps entrepreneurs turn their marketing ideas into marketing duns. All right, everybody. Carl, welcome to the podcast, man. This this is this is this will be a joy to record. Um, How are you doing, man? I'm doing really well, Chris, man. It's a pleasure to be here and. You know, it's funny, as you said, we were on our my podcast recently recording and we did go down that memory lane and it, it's because we've been in this game for at least a decade. I can't remember. We can't, so I know long. we figured it out on the last yeah. podcast, but it's been a long time. And the, the, the space, the marketing automation space, the platforms, how many businesses are actually doing it has exploded in that time. And then now, yeah. you know, we're in this age of AI coming into mix into the mix as well. So just. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Yes, yes. So, so those of you that that don't know, there's really, truth be told, Carl, I think there's a a good two handfuls of entrepreneurs in the space right now that have been in the business of su- su- providing marketing automation or helping you get it done for at least ten years. There, there's not a whole lot of us. And and those who have those those expert scars on your back in the battle tested wounds, we're we're very much familiar if we don't know each other personally, but we're we're very familiar. So um, you are not listening, everyone. You're not listening to a newbie. This is not somebody who just got an idea yesterday about, hey, I want to start an agency. Carl is battle tested. In fact, Carl, um, what was that trajectory into automation agency i remember the days of active campaign certified consulting uh prior to that entreport slash office autopilot but just catch up the audience quickly on how did you land on the idea of of automation agency what was it that you saw in the market and 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 that led you to decide to start that I'll give you the most abridged version that I can think of in this moment. So um, context, I've always been a techie. Uh, I taught, taught myself to code at the age of 10. And ultimately, I started my first proper official business, you know, not like selling things at school, but an actual registered business in Australia uh, at the age of 15. And it was doing web design, web hosting for people. Mm-hmm. And so I always kind of had this this tech and web online marketing days this is before i knew about marketing automation but i was still involved in online business um way back in the early 2000s 2001 i think was when i was 15 about then so you know pre pre big google dominance um anyways i had an it company with my father after my web design business i kind of went into this it company with my father we ran it for eight years and towards the end of that i wrote my first book red means go Mm -hmm. and when i wrote my book, I started to learn, well, you know, you need to want to build an email list and 
I'd run this business for years in my IT company without really building email lists or really doing much email marketing. And now all of a sudden I had a book <laughs> and I was getting more exposed to what people would call the info marketer world, I guess. Um, I'd been a consumer of info marketer products. I didn't know it at the time, but now I was starting to be a info marketer mm -hmm. and email lists is what you needed. And someone recommended this tool called Send Pepper. And so I signed up, I think it was 30 bucks a month. And that was really my first introduction to the power of like, oh, cool. Like you can set up these, an email happens and three days later, this email happens. And now don't, before, I, I do need to say before Send Pepper, I did sign up with Aweber. So I, it wasn't completely, I'd never done email marketing, but Aweber didn't have the real power and logic that Send Pepper introduced. And then later Active Campaign made even simpler and easier. Um, so Send Pepper, for those that don't know, if you've heard of Entreport, Send Pepper was the beginning and then there was an upgrade to a, a product called Office Autopilot. And Office Autopilot is what got rebranded into Entreport. I don't remember what year Landon and the team did that, but I do remember when it happened. And um, that was my first introduction. I was like, I've got a book to, uh, you know, I want to have a bonus when people download my book. There's a page in the book that says, go here to download the bonus. So I needed something. And so I send Pepper was what I used. Now, uh, fast forward for a while, I, I'd sold my IT company. And I was lost trying to figure out who the hell I was. I tried mm. being a life coach. I tried all sorts of things. <laughs> um, and ultimately, I eventually ended up starting a coaching company teaching people about buying, selling businesses. Mm. Now, at that point, I was now using Office Autopilot, the more powerful rules, control, billing, all of these functions. And I was in a community of a whole bunch of other coaches. And what was clear to me i was doing okay in my coaching business i wasn't doing amazing uh, i loved like don't get me wrong the presenting was good but the business side of it i wasn't necessarily making big bank and um i'm around all these other coaches and they're all asking me constantly how are you how are you automating all this webinar registration stuff and how are you getting these text messages sent and how are you doing this and how are you doing that and so i'm just helping them for free like oh i did this and here's how i did and then people are like oh yeah it'd be really great if you hired some vas and just i could just use them or if i hired a va you could train them for me and i'm like no and eventually um i got down to my last five grand uh, I was, I, I'd wiped out all the money that I'd u had from the sale of the IT company. And I was now down to my last five grand and I'm going, Oh crap. I need to find a way to make some money. What if I, um, what if I started doing done for you marketing services where all these people mm -hmm. who've been asking me for years and that's what I did. And that was, that was the start of automation agency. It was originally very centered on me. You got me. I was the strategist. I did so much of the work. And then about six months in, I had an epiphany. I was like, hold on, I've been spending the last four years teaching people about how to build a business you could sell. I could never sell this business. Let's reevaluate my whole business model. And that's what led to the business model that exists today. So, man, 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 <sighs> what, what I love about that story is the reluctant answer to the call, right? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> there are times I was like, where... no, I don't want to do it. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. No. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And it's like, look, guys, I, I I hear what you're saying. I hear that need, but I don't I don't want to meet that need. And uh, hats off to you is that, you, you know, it's it seems like it would be easy when when money gets funny or, or, you know, the account gets low, that it would be an easy decision to say, you know what, let me pivot. But Carl, what I've learned over the years as I've talked to many, many business owners is it is not. There's a lot of pride. There's a lot of this. This is going to work. This has to work and uh, essentially leads them to an unrecoverable uh, d d dismay. And for you, you looked at the account and was like, wait a minute. Hold on. Um, Five thousand. <laughs> Time out. Time out. What did the market say again? OK, let me let me try that. Uh, try that out. Um, so it sounds like there was a point in time where you were doing more of a service based. And then the when you realize, wait a minute, I can't I can't sell this. I can't scale this is when you went to a more productized approach to uh, uh, delivering automation. And, and at that time, Carl, I remember I remember when you did this. That wasn't a big thing. There was not a whole lot of people doing productized services. So where did you kind of get the permission for the lack of a better term to just say, you know what, I'm going to do it this way. 
Yeah, so it's interesting that around the time, so basically the same time I started automation agency as a more productized model is the almost to the month, the same time that Russ Perry from uh, Design Pickle launched Design Pickle in the model that he did, if, if ah. anyone listening is familiar with it. So basically same business model, but he's focused purely on design, whereas we were automation, web design, a whole bunch of things. Um, mm -hmm. So it was fascinating that literally almost to the month that we, we, we did the same kind of model. But I believe, I don't, I don't know his story enough, but one of the, there was a company here in Australia that was quite well known. It saw, ended up selling to GoDaddy for, I don't remember what year that was, um, but it was called WP Curve and they were mm. offering unlimited WordPress fixes and tweaks. Um, and so I was familiar with them in the marketplace. I'd seen them, someone had pointed them out to me, but also in my IT company, um, which I'd had for, for eight years, we sold in 2011. It, we were effectively a managed service product. Like we were a subscription service. You pay us this flat fee. You got unlimited IT support that we delivered remotely. So I already effectively knew the model. I knew the subscription based model. Mm. I knew the, Hey, all you could eat unlimited. All I did was pick it up and go, okay, well, we used to do this in IT. Let's apply it over here in the marketing space. Um, I definitely got, I, you know, I, I definitely got some inspiration from WP curve and you know, how they communicated their, their value prop and, and things, which, um, was very helpful, but it, it, it as a lot of it was, I'd already been doing it in a previous business. It was just picking up that business model and applying it to almost a different industry. If you like, I love it, man. I, I, I often say, or maybe I don't say it out loud. I say it to myself. Um, one of my favorite books was John Maxwell's sometimes you win and sometimes you learn, but it had lose. It was, it was X'd out and it said, learn. And as long as you're a student, and as long as you remain teachable in life, there is no experience. There is no event that has taken place that has that is of waste. Right. So you didn't know it at the time, but there were so many skills and so much experience and exposure that you were getting that you would later use to leverage and, and, and build where you are now. So I've been. Um, I've built myself, my, my business, especially at Automation Bridge, I have a, a, a program that trains digital marker, marketers how to be automate, what I call automation service providers. And my, you know, coming from active campaign, I just saw uh, a need of education. People really didn't know what they were doing. And it was like, like I had the passion to do it and say, hey, let me train you. And, and then leaning on my experience from lead pages, I realized that everybody needs a marketer internal to their business to really help them execute. And I, I'm, I'm going to say this humbly, everyone. Uh, this is the first time I think I, I believe I've said this publicly, um, Carl, that model worked for a time. And we're actually in the process of revamping it because as technology advanced, um, as automation became more native in like every application that you can use, it's almost like living in a country where you don't need a license to drive, but you should get one. <laughs> yes, right? that's a really great. I like that analogy. That's a great analogy. Right. It's like, look, let me teach you how to drive the right way. However, it's people out there saying, why do I need to pay for that training and that license? I could just kind of go on YouTube and these cars have instructions within them that tell me when to shift. I'll just drive this myself. And as much as I was like, but wait, you need to learn how to do this the right way. The market has spoken, Carl, the market has spoken. So I, I admit that even me, there's a bit of a, OK, what is the market saying versus what you want to do? So I've been on the mm. education side of implementing automation and you're on the delegation side. So I wanted to highlight because, listen, my, my commitment is to the space of marketing automation. Everyone, you all know that my mission is to make automation accessible regardless. I don't care what path you get to it as long as you get intelligent automation implemented. So on on from your perspective, Carl, you're like, hey, look, we've got a team for you. If you if you if you know what you're doing, if you know what needs to be done, just let us handle that heavy lifting. 
we'll 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 take care of it for for you. Um, I want you to just talk about some of the successes, some of the case studies that uh, those those stories you hear, like oh my gosh, Carl, thank you so much. I don't know what I would do without automation agency. What are some of those things people are saying as a result of being able to delegate automation? Well, uh, the first success story I'll share is me. You know, mm. I, I, I built again, I, you know, I shared the bit about, well, I had the market telling me what they wanted, but I also had a vision in my head of at that time, I was like, oh, I'd like to just be buying and selling um, online businesses, but I don't want to be the one doing the work. Mm. And I, I would love a team that I could just delegate to. I would, I would prefer, even though I could push the buttons, I would prefer to just be the idea with the, the guy with the ideas and go, hey, here's how I want it to be. Here's what I've sketched out on a piece of paper for the automation, go and make it happen. And, um, you know, I'm a client of my own service. I have been mm. from, from day one. Um, I, in the beginning, I was the one who would log in and send in tasks. Now I've got team members and project managers who go in and do that. So I very rarely go in even now myself, but it, the, I still can be very much the ideas guy. And so the biggest success there is even someone like me and you, Chris, who, who we, we know how to do this stuff. Yeah. It's about understanding that sometimes it's not the best use of our time. <laughs> and in fact, if, if, you know, dear listener or viewer, you are one of those highly technical people that get a lot of joy playing around in the active campaign or whatever marketing automation tool you use, there is a high chance that you use that joy and that fun as a distraction from the things that will actually move the needle in your mm. business. Ooh. And uh, so it's fun. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for <laughs> Sometimes that you're using it as a procrastination method when really you should get on the phone and sell or you should be reaching out to that person or you should be getting on podcasts or whatever it is you should be doing in your business that will actually move the needle. And so when all of a sudden you have a team that you can go, okay, here you go, get it done for me, It you don't have an excuse. You, you, you now have the yeah. time to go and do those things that really are going to move the needle that only, at least right now in the business, only you can do. So even if you've got the skills like me, the service has been a godsend in that I can just now focus on the idea and the sketch. And actually, um, in the beginning, our best clients were people like me and you, Chris, it was the technical people. Mm -hmm. So really, it's about that freeing up headspace and time to allow you to focus on the stuff that matters, selling, designing, creating what the fun, what, you know, what the funnel should be or what the automation should be coming up with the concept of, oh, here's the problem we need to fix. Here's what I want it to do. But now you don't have to go around and click around the help docs to figure out how to do that thing that's not working or troubleshoot the issue that didn't quite work the way you wanted. Or even if it is a straightforward automation, let's be honest, these tools, they're still a bit sluggish and slow. Like the speed at which you can yeah. draw out what you want to have happen on a piece of paper versus yeah. the speed it then takes for you to build that automation, test it, you know, it, it's it's not best use of our time as the business owners or if you're in the marketing team as, a, as the marketing manager or the, you know, you've got enough on your plate and other things to do. So I, I would say that's that's the number one case study I would share with you is is me. I, I've got mm. my own website. I've got the automation agency website. I, you know, I've got social media graphics. I've got um, some social videos, all of that stuff the team do. And all I have to do is set up either some recurring tasks in some instances. Uh, for example, like I have, I have a couple of blog posts that I wrote many years ago. Um, Chris, I'm sure you even saw some of them. You know, I reviewed different platforms, Entreport and Active Campaign in particular. Yeah, and yeah. I have, I have a recurring task with my team. Every month they go in and they check those blog posts, check the links are working, update screenshots if the websites have changed. Um, I don't have to do that every month. The system wow. just automatically logs that for the team to do. And, and that just helps keep those blog posts fresh, um, make sure that they're still relevant for the people who come to check them out. So there's little things like that you can do. Uh, if I if I move to another type of case study though, we, we work with a lot of coaches. Okay. Uh, our biggest, we have two big markets. We have agencies who are, you know, they, they have the relationship with the client and they, they, they follow what I call the, the 10, 80, 10 principle. This is how we recommend people work with us anyway, is, you know, you do the front end 10% with the client, the relationship, the design, the strategy, what do you need? You delegate the 80% to us or to internal team. Like you just delegate the 80% and then you do the final 10%. That might be the checking, the handover back to the client. Mm. And so we, we have a lot of agencies who work with us in that, that model. Uh, and then the other type of clients is, a large portion of them are coaches. They're, they've got membership sites, they've got um, you know info products, 
books, courses, coaching programs. And that, I think that just comes because that's the community that I came from when I started Automation and see that just we kind of exploded in that in that world. We've got other business types as well, but they're one of our biggest. And so in the coaching space, um, we have a uh, mentally blanking on his name right now because here's the thing that's interesting when someone goes, tell me about your clients. We have at any one's time like 200 active clients. Mm. I don't know. I, I mean, I have an idea of some of them because some of them are personal friends or people I've met over the years, but I don't know day to day what they're asking us to do, right? Sure. That's just, it's in the system and I'm not aware. But we've got this one guy, he's from the UK. He recently gave us a video testimonial and he just said like the amount of time he has freed up being able mm. to now just say, hey, here's, here's this great landing page in a funnel I've seen. I want you to use that as a model and build that out on my website. Okay, done. Um, oh, and I need some social graphics. And, and so his whole, he's got like his whole for 12 months worth of social graphics ready to go out. Um, he does work, he's, he's a coach. So we do his workbooks and, and PowerPoint presentations, slides on the graphic design side. So really the, the power is in, we say like, you know, we've hired, everyone you'll ever need now that's a bit of a you know marketing pitch because the reality <laughs> is there's probably people you will need that we don't have we haven't hired every single person in the world right mm -hmm. but we've we've got the core the graphic design the video editing the word, wordpress um the marketing automation so your entreports your infusionsoft your active campaigns your click funnels your all those types of tools um kajabi etc and then we've got um we just launched ai powered copywriting so, you know, if, if you've, if you've used tools like Jasper or yes. if you've just played with chat GPT, we've built basically on top of those, um, to just try and simplify the process. So you can just request a task and it just goes straight to the AI. It comes back with the, the result, uh, and you can use that to write emails or to write headlines or to write sales pages, mm -hmm. um, social posts. So that, that's been, that's been a cool, fun little new, new feature that we've rolled out to, which uh, it doesn't completely replace all copywriting, but it's made a huge difference to many of our clients. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I can I, keep going. Of, yeah, the, the, I, big, the biggest thing really is the time. time. <laughs> Listen, Carl, you, you said so much. I, I, I want to piggyback, want to reverse and, and piggyback on some of the things that you said. One is the, the distraction and procrastination piece. And that mm -hmm. one really hit home because I as a this is specifically for the, the techie folks. You can easily tell yourself that you're making progress or doing what needs to be done because you enjoy the tech. And when things get tough, that's your comfort zone. Right. That's your tub of ice cream. When the stress hits, you just go and get the <laughs> get that tub of ice cream and eat that you playing around in the tech. And it's truthfully. um a fear, a fear of growing, a fear of doing what's what it takes um, to grow. And I'm not saying that to beat you up, everyone, but some of you are extremely techy and are not experiencing the level of growth in your business that you really should. So I wanted to highlight that because that that one hurt in a good way, you know, because I, I live that life, Carl. And sometimes I revert back. And I'm so glad you said that I've got metrics and dashboards and all of that to keep me on track because it's like hey if these numbers aren't moving <laughs> none of that none of that other stuff matters um and and then two is you're painting you're just talking about success stories but i feel like you're painting a picture of paradise for some listener right some listener didn't know how can my website be maintained and my, my email get written? Like it just seems so overwhelming. And here's what I find what happens now, Carl, is that they're either going to Fiverr or they're going to Upwork. And I want to say something about that. One of the things that I personally experienced, everyone, this is not me just pulling something out of, out of, uh, out of the air. And you can see this actually, uh, at, at Automation AC, Carl, you, you all do a very good job of documentation um, and explaining how to best use or submit your task so that it can get done to to the level that, that you need it. And as a mature marketer, some of the questions that you ask, I'm like, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> right. Like you'll allow people to upload a screenshot of something that they've scribbled. 
right? Like you'll walk them through if they don't know what, what the novice will do is just have an intake form and say, hey, what do you need us to do? Right. That, that's what the yeah. novice would do. But you can tell you've had so many reps in doing automation and implementing it and submitting it yourself. You know what questions and, and answers you need in, in, in order to do the job successfully. So that's one of the things that are a glaring difference for me when I'm looking at solutions. I was like, wait a minute. I've never seen that. Right. People are usually so lazy with the intake form, but you ask the right questions so that you can assume that the person submitting it really knows. They're just like, I need an email autoresponder. Whoa, whoa, time out. <laughs> time out. How many emails? What's the delay? Hey, what are some headlines that you, you like? What is your, you know, things of that nature. And to hear you talk about AI, I want to talk about the development of the product. Oftentimes, I have founders on here who have created software. But again, Carl, you've done a masterful job with, with treating this service as a product. And in that, I see the development. You, you, you didn't outright say it, but I'm piecing it together for our listeners. You started out with the tasks, right? Automation, website. But now I was listening to you. You were talking about presentations. <laughs> you talk about copy. Talk about that development of the product beyond just the automation task that you saw as an opportunity. And how did you balance it to where it, it wasn't too much? You know, I think it's a constant. We're still constantly figuring out, you know, and, and debating internally. Have we gone too much? Are we expanding too far? Mm -hmm. uh, but it comes down to just like you've got your mission. You know, for, for us, the mission is how do we make online marketing simple and accessible right mm -hmm. and, and and we we can and, and kind of one of the core driving missions for us internally is is how do we take tasks off our client's plate you know we've yes. got a busy business owner who, they're an entrepreneur they should be focused on what they do best even if sometimes they've got the skills to do it so either you don't have the skills and you need it done or you do have the skills how do we how do we take more off their plate and not put things back and so it's that driving question that's constantly led our evolution of oh well you know, we need to add this or we need to add that. And I've wanted to add copywriting to what we do for at least probably five years. But the the, mm. the mathematics of what it would do to our price if we added it held us back. And then when AI um, got as good as it did and, and it was clear to everyone late last year, all of a sudden I was like, we can, we can include copywriting now. We can still have paid extra for human powered copywriting yeah. for people who want it, but we can now include it in our unlimited service because the AI can do it so well, so fast, and at, a, at, a, at an affordable price point for us. So, um, so it's kind of that's where the evolution. It's always just looking back at what does the client actually need. And uh, I can't remember which book or who first said it, but I, I always keep this in mind: is like you've got to fall in love with the client that you serve, not in love with your product. Mm. And if I was purely in love with my product, which don't get me wrong, there's been times over the last nine years that I have been like, no, this is how, you know, clients ask for things. And we're like, no, this is how we work. This is how it is. Like, these are my rules. Um, and then eventually the market kind of batters you into submission that you realize, actually, no, I need, <laughs> I need to change. You don't listen to what the client is saying. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's, that's also something that always serves as well. I'll, I'll go back a minute and go, we're, you know, we're called automation agency. So most okay. people, when they think about us, they think we do just the marketing automation setup. And often people go, oh, you do graphic design, you do video editing. I had no idea. Um, and the reason we're called automation agency is one, yes, we, we came from that marketing tech world, but I, I've always for a long time believed that automation is just you not doing it. Yes. And that yes. it's being done either by tech or team. It doesn't really matter who automation is just like, I have my idea. I don't want to be the one doing it. And I'm either going to use tech team or a combination of both to achieve the result. And so that's kind of where our overarching automation agency comes from. The reason we launched with graphic design is purely because when I transitioned from it being the full service Carl show of automation entity uh, to our more strategic model, I had a graphic designer on, on staff and he was really good. And I thought, well, why don't I make him available for clients? <laughs> that was that was the pure reason we we're like let's just throw graphic wow. design in um and you know interestingly enough graphic design for us is one of those things that clients either love or they hate 
uh, which is interesting. But it's also one of the things that there's bread and butter almost every month. Someone's got at least one graphic design task they might need done versus yeah. in the automation world. Like if we purely just did the tech automation, um, often once you've set up your automation once, for most businesses, don't get me wrong, there are businesses that are always needing to improve every month. But for most businesses, once you've got certain projects set up, it's done. The job is done. And so an unlimited subscription model like ours, purely focused on automation, I think we would have a much higher churn than we do with the full gamut of what we do. So the, the evolution has come from listening to clients. What do they need? Listening to myself. What do I need? Um, we more recently launched a, a higher end service. So for a long time, the client had to be the project manager. Someone in the company had to be the project manager. You know, okay. you, you, if you've got a big project, we're a task-based service. So you want to build a funnel? Well, you're going to have a graphic design task for the designer to design the landing page. Then you're going to have a tech task to build the landing page in yeah. whatever platform you're building it in. And then you've got another automation task for the email follow-ups. And so there'd be th at least three, maybe four tasks just for a very simple funnel. And for a technical person, that makes perfect sense. But for the less technical, that always... For them, they're just like, I want a funnel. Yep. <laughs> they're, they're, but they're yep. thinking projects. And um, we always said, well, someone in your company, either you or a company to, to, to do that. And then in more recent times, about a year ago, we launched our project manager service where now you can have one person, you can hand over the bigger project and they're still breaking it down into the tasks, but it gives that that more personalized, almost a virtual assistant like level yeah. that that's improved that workflow. And again, I resisted it for a long time. Clients wanted it, clients wanted it. No, no, no. And and then eventually it was like, no, actually, I want this too. And <laughs> I can see how this will make it simpler. Let's do a small pivot and trial. We did the pilot and it blew up. Mm. And so then now it's like, okay, how do we scale that? You know, the recruitment, the training, and, and that side of our business too. And it's 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 just been, if anything, it, we probably sell more of that service now than any of our other services. So it's just an ongoing, you know, it's the world of business. It's ongoing. Yeah. Listen to the client. What do they need? And and that development, you know, even the portal and the wizards that you were talking about, the asking of the questions, all of that came from solving little problems. Yeah. Um, I still remember So when we started, we had no web portal. We had no web interface. It was purely an mm. email ticketing mm. system. You know, you sent, you sent in an email, we replied back. Like that's, that's how it was. It was just a simple ticketing system. And, uh, you know, that worked for the people who knew what they were doing, but it didn't for the people who didn't. And then there was just confusion around like people would send reply that where people would reply to an old ticket with a new task and it would create all this confusion. Oh yeah. It's like, I we need, we that. need a visual interface. So we built a portal, which made it very clear. And then we started going, well, you know, people are frustrated that there's all this back and forward. I sent in my task, then you've asked me all these questions. And then the team are getting frustrated because the client isn't, you know, they'll answer three of the four questions they've asked. And that fourth question is slowing everything down because we don't have the answer to that. And then it was like, okay, well, where's, there's a whole bunch of things we do regularly or common. What if we just had these intake for each of those, which yeah. asks those questions and we want to achieve two things, train the client how to send a task in without a wizard. So they can at least see, you don't have to write a full page because we sometimes back in the early days, we would get people write these like long multi-page Google doc briefs and send that to us as an attachment for a task. And it was, it was horrendous. And so we, we were kind of like, we want to train clients that this is a conversational, just flick off a very, Hey, you know, most of our wizards, they'll be like, Hey team, uh, I'm wanting this like this. If you could do it like that, here's some attachments. Like that's effectively how they, they get built together. Yeah. And, um, so we're training clients and at the same time for those common things, we're saving time on both sides because we're getting all the answers we need up front. Uh, anything that's not urgent, we in the wizards will give an option to say, I'll send that later or I don't know, come up with something. So we're, we're mm -hmm. not, because we're always trying to not put things back on the client's end. As I said, we always want to go, yeah. how do we, how do we yeah. not put more workload back onto the client? How do we take it away from them? Yeah. So it, most questions there's an option to say, I don't know, come up with something or use your experience. Um, but for those that do know, it lets them go, oh, I haven't thought about that. I need to upload a wireframe or I need to think about this or give them an example page. So the development is just listen to your clients, yeah. constantly listen, solve problems. And uh, I'll keep you posted if I think we've gone too far into the scope of what we do. There are days that I think we have, I truly do. Yeah. But I keep coming back to if we, we've got a competitor now in the space. I, I think they started 
well, sorry, they didn't start. They pivoted to similar model to us, I think about three years ago. Okay. And I, you know, I keep an eye on them every now and then and have a look at what they're doing. And, and they have, in my opinion, a ridiculous scope. Mm. Of, like they've added, they've added all these crazy things that I just, I wonder, you know, I'm sure everyone does this about your competitors. I wonder how the internal workings of their business work yep. to make that not absolute yep. mayhem. Um, but it's interesting, you know, it's interesting to see. So I don't, I don't plan to, to copy all the things they've got on, on scope, but I pay attention to see what, what they add to see if there's anything to go. I hadn't thought about adding that into what yeah. we need to do. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, you said something about automation and, and it's real, right? It's the whole point of automation is that you can have team or tech handle tasks for you. So you do get to a point and I uh, I recorded a podcast episode called uh, Automation Guilt because I, I wasn't aware of it. And I started to experience it when I was at Lead Pages and I, had, you know, really built the system out and I would come to work, Carl. And I'd be like, man, there's really not much for me to do. <laughs> like every emails are going out, 10 pages on the webinars, reminders, affiliates are getting their stuff like I was kind of twiddling my thumbs, you know. And I would look around and every department would be look, be working so hard. And I was like, man, Chris, you've, you've got to work harder or something. But what I was experiencing is there comes a point where the system per your model in, in whatever scaled capacity you are is handling things for you. And you simply mm. need to focus on other areas of business. So if I tell you to automate inherent in that is at some point, you won't need to focus on just that automation. There'll be other areas in your business. And for you to see that and pinpoint that and say, OK, well, wait a minute. There's only going to be a finite amount of tasks <laughs> for automation until they grow or, you know, need need it at another level. Um, so I, I love that part about it. And it's it's. When you when I'm listening to you speak as well and, and everybody, Carl is on here for twofold, one, because of the the agency that he runs. But two is I also want you all to see the person, the brain behind it. And one thing about you, Carl, that if if they haven't seen it, I'm going to call it out so they can see it, is that you're always evolving not just with the client needs but also with the market right like you're mentioning how now you have some ai generated um copywriting and other things instead of being scared and saying oh no the ai monsters are coming you're like okay this is there's a market shift this is what tech does it changes every eight weeks eight days <laughs> you know whatever how can we now leverage this technology, this new shift so that our clients and customers are not left in the dust, but they also aren't mandated to figure it all out. They can just leverage it on behalf of you and team. So um, I absolutely love that. Now, now somebody's listening and they, they may have been you, you might have them drooling, Carl. They're like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I didn't know this was possible or, you know, they're distracted. They're supposed to be listening to their spouse or, you know, on a walk with <laughs> and they're just distracted because you you painted a picture of offloading these tasks that they never knew um, was possible. So so just give that listener who's like, wow, where would I get started? What would do, do? How do I know if my business is ready? What are some of the preparatory steps that you recommend somebody take? But prior to engaging uh, with you to ensure the, the the fastest the fastest onboarding. Yeah, man, uh, it's interesting. There, there's some clients come to us, and there's been this list building. So if you if you've got this list that's back of your mind, might not even be written down. Maybe it is of these. Like someday I want to get to those things. Like oh, I need to do that little fix on the website. No, I know that's wrong. We need to fix that. No. You know, I haven't really looked at our client onboarding sequence in a while or, you know, that yeah. this bit, I've always been planning to, to launch some Facebook ads and I need a funnel, but it's, it's not a priority right now. Like if you've got, if you've got this list of things that you're never getting to, maybe you've even got a whole bunch of business cards that, you know, you scanned, but have never loaded into your CRM, things like that. Um, 
those those are really good starting places if you've got that list mm. you just go okay cool this is stuff i was never going to get to let's just get started delegate this and get these things done that was someday maybes mm. and and get some benefits and usually it's it's just get the ball rolling it's similar mm. if, if anyone's ever hired their first team member virtual or in person usually your experience in the beginning is i don't know if i've got enough to fill them full-time yep. or part-time you know yep. i'm just going to start them casual i'm just going to start them part-time because i don't know if i got enough yep. but once you get started once they're on and you see them do you start to just see things your reticular activating system the part of your mind that notices things starts to notice opportunities everywhere oh i can send that i can send that i can send that so the number one thing is you start because your mind that reticular the ras will will focus you on finding more opportunities to delegate the yeah. other thing i would say is if you if you don't have that back list of things that you've not gotten to you, the next thing is do a do a time audit what are the mm. what are the things that you're currently spending your time on every week and just you know, a couple of weeks just measure make down make notes you know some people say every 15 minutes just make a note of what have i been doing and once you once you've done that if you want if you want the shortcut and you don't want a time audit block 10 minutes out in your calendar sit down and go Look at the look at your calendar and go. What did I do on Monday? What did I do on Tuesday? What did I do on Wednesday? And write out all the things you did. Circle the things that you enjoyed or were worthwhile, and then look mm. at all the other things and go. Could I have delegated that to someone else? Did you do some graphic stuff? Did you mm. fiddle around on the website? Did you fit around in automation? Now, even if you did that audit and the answer is no, you didn't didn't do it. I'm sure you'll find other opportunities to automate or delegate, even if they're yeah. not in my wheelhouse or Chris's wheelhouse. It, then the next question to ask yourself is, well, what would I like my business to be doing? What's missing? Uh, the obvious where, where most people I find usually have the least, uh, many people focus on all their sales and marketing automation, and they forget that marketing continues after you get the customer. So client onboarding is usually a really big opportunity that's not been looked at properly is the moment they become a client or customer. What is the, the flow, the sequence? Of, of events that happen and that the other thing too is people also think about their automations as emails and sms's and whatever going out to the client and they don't yeah. think about well what about the internal prompts and notes to internal team members to say hey pick up the phone and call this person or hey send something in the mail to this person or maybe they want to integrate with um a tool like lob or one of those which can send a direct mail piece automatically yeah. like if listening if you didn't know that you can actually have the moment someone signs up that that could trigger something to a fulfillment house or to a print on demand service that could print a letter or welcome letter or can uh, send a, a goodie bag to your client these mm -hmm. are some of the things that there's a real opportunity there um another another area that i find a lot of people seem to miss if you're a subscription business in particular mm -hmm. getting your failed payment uh automations and notifications that's it's money on the table right there the moment nice. you fix those it's instant money. If you can get someone to update their credit card or a failed payment, you know, you have it notify them multiple times. And if it can't fix, you then have it in notify someone internal to, to do something. So the, the delivery side and outside of the tech automation side of things, I often tell people as a business owner, the first area of your business, if you want to move to the next level of freedom in your business, the first level that you should really look to get yourself out of is delivery. Mm. If you are involved in the delivery of what you do, you will always, always have a capacity issue. Mm. And so you tech automation stuff, absolutely. But then I'd be looking at anywhere in your delivery. What can you automate? That's that's the first obvious outside of what most people think is obvious in the marketing space. Yeah, that is that is so good, Carl. And, and I'll add to it. F first off, absolutely on the delivery side, um, increase your capacity by removing yourself immediately, <laughs> okay? Um, you'll make more money. Uh, but the time audit piece, the other thing that I found uh, that was really helpful for me was, and, it, and there's a variety of software tools that you can use to do this. I am i don't personally use any of them because I don't track my time, but I've, I've got a, a post on the, on the website with some time tracking apps, so we'll make sure that's in the show notes. But looking at having the, the team that you do have log their time and auditing where they're spending their time and look at that through the lens of what you're paying them. 
because oftentimes you'll find I did this one time, Carl, and I had a I had a, a you know, a sheet and I was looking at the time sheet and it was like 10 hours this month. I was like, hmm, what they spend 10 hours on? And it said meetings. I said, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how that's possible because I, I love 30 minute meetings. And I if I can keep it shorter than that. But it just it was a quick reminder that wait a minute that is time we cannot be spending that amount of time on that thing so when you're doing your time audit of yourself also your team and 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 again run it across okay it could i be handing these tasks off and getting more i i have to say this good help is extremely hard to find especially technical so if you if you have a resource that can do the technical tasks for you and remove that load. And this is for the techie and non-techie. If you're techie, this is just in a way to increase your capacity. Because again, you're removing yourself from delivery. <laughs> so it works either yes. way. But you have to, you, you have to understand that you're not going to easily go to the marketplace. Even me, I have a hard time finding people who could truly show up consistently for the business and 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 do a high quality of, of work. So, um, Carl, man, thank you for coming on to the podcast and and gleaning, allowing us to glean from you. Um, you could tell you, you can really tell uh, you're not just about the tech and business, you know, as you talk, you can, you know, your mind has expanded around different theories on life and, and, and investing and, you know, the best ways to uh, build businesses and all of that. People have heard your voice maybe for the first time. They didn't know automation agency even existed. <laughs> and now they're like, hold on, Chris, where do I find this guy? How do I connect with them? Um, for those listeners, where can they go? Where can they find out more? How can they connect with you? Yeah, so uh, if you want to learn more about Automation Agency, the best place is automationagency.com. You see all our pricing, you see all the information, uh, you can see design portfolios of graphic design stuff, you can see video portfolio, video stuff we do. Um, you can get started right there on, on the website, or if you'd like to book a time to chat to someone, you can book a, a 15 minute call where we just learn more about what you're looking to do, what tool techs platforms you're using. And we figure out if we think we're a good match for your needs or not. Uh, if we are, we can demo the platform, show you how those wizards and stuff we're talking about works. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the best way. If you want to learn more about that, if you want to connect more with me personally, maybe you are like, Hey, that sounds cool. I'll, I'll look at automation agency, but right now I'm just more interested in being connected with, with you, Carl. Um, yeah. You can find me at Carl Taylor. It's Carl with a C. Or, uh, I, you know, I'm imagining this is probably a more American audience. So let's just make sure I put my pronunciation. It's <laughs> Carl, Carl Taylor, uh, .com .au. And uh, you can connect with me on socials, you know, YouTube, all of that from, from that website. Oh, man, that, the, the, the America. <laughs> I wasn't ready. I, I, I was uh, I was at one of the tra traffic and conversion summit. Oh, I, don't know, I remember what year it was, but it was so funny. I was. I was there and I met this guy at dinner and I go, Hey, I'm Carl. Cause I, I when I'm in America, I have to pronounce here my, my name better because otherwise it's always wrong. So, Hey, I'm yeah. Carl. And uh, he goes, Hey, I'm Maury. And anyways, we sit down and I'm like, Hey, so where are you from? And he, and I go, I'm Sydney, Australia. And he goes, oh, I'm from Brisbane, Australia. And I was like, a second we like, did you pronounce your R's? He's like, yes, I have to do that here. And it was very funny. Oh, man. Great story. <laughs> and to be able to turn it on like that is uh, it's hilarious to me. I, I'm always fascinated, even when actors, you know, they they have the American accent and then you hear their native tongue. You're like, I never knew he was British, you know. <laughs> um, so, man, Carl, thanks again, man. This has been great. Um, this is this has been a refreshing reminder to myself. Um, to 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 leverage leverage the hands there's help out there everyone there there is help out here um, so hopefully it is encouraging to you as well that you too can can remove that tech stumbling block uh, from it again all of the links will be in the show notes you can go there right now click on it and I guarantee you can access Carl in all of the the ways that he's mentioned Carl thank you for coming on listeners thank you for get, lending us your ears, lending us your ears. I hope we've paid you back 
handsomely many times over with what you've heard today. And everyone, everyone, continue to automate responsibly, my friends. Carl, thank you for coming on, man. Thanks, Chris.